What's up everybody? If you watch my most recent video, you might know what this is already about, but it seems like the Chugga Conroy controversy has gotten way, way worse with some new allegations that just came out. Now I just rolled out of bed, but this has been blowing up on Twitter since last night and I knew I just had to get it out there. If you're not caught up on the allegations against Chugga Conroy, I advise you to go watch my most recent video. But for a very quick recap, he's been sending messages to multiple females trying to engage in foot fetish roleplay or sneaker fetish roleplay, I guess. We've had multiple people speak out on it. We've had co-workers and collaborators of him come out against him saying that this is true and all this has happened and it's made them very uncomfortable. And now we have Worcester here saying, I'm sharing the story of a close friend of mine to allow her to maintain anonymity. She feels it's relevant to share given the dynamic started when she was 15 years old and he was 19. You can read her whole statement and logs here. And she links to a Google Doc. Now, she does screenshot four distinct moments in the conversation between Chugga Conroy and her friend here. But I have the entire Google Doc open and ready to read. Now, this document is 48 pages long, so I do suggest that you read through it yourself if you're interested. For some reason, I couldn't get it to load on mobile. I can only get it to load on my desktop, so keep that in mind if you do try and read these documents. Now, again, this is all alleged. Take it with a grain of salt. It is someone saying that their friend interacted with the Chugga. It's not a first-hand account. So it starts with this note saying, Hey, Lolly here. I'm never speaking about any of this, so please bear with me. I wish to remain anonymous, as I'm not a public figure. I'm just a person trying to do the right thing, and please ask that you respect my privacy. I've known Chugga Conroy since late 2009, and we started speaking as friends starting in early 2010. We started talking because of a cringe video I made doing voice lines for Gigas. I was so excited to meet and talk to my hero at the time, I didn't have many friends, so it felt extra special to have someone as important as him show interest in speaking with me. Excuse my voice too, I did really just roll out of bed. <laughs> at the time, Chugga, or Emil, used AIM, AOL Instant Messenger, and I had a potato PC that couldn't run it, so I used this thing called Mebo, which let me use AIM in a browser and speak with him. I saved the logs and a message to myself on Gaia Online because of how precious they were to me at the time. I haven't used the site in years, but the recent allegations against Chugga made me really start to think and question our friendship. I dug up everything and started to read through all of the old messages between us, and, uh, it's bad. Beyond the 2010 era cringe, he said things to me while I was underage that are not okay. It never occurred to me when I was younger how bad the situation was. At the time, I was so, so excited my hero was talking to me and showing interest in me. For years, I was friends with him and never really thought about how bad the situation actually was. I'm still coming to terms with all of it, and to be honest, I'm not really sure how I should feel. I know it's not right, though. Speaking that way to a minor is unacceptable, and I worry if anyone else has been affected and also might be too afraid to speak out. I understand that people may be skeptical of claims like this. I'm sure if he's your hero too, you wouldn't want to believe any of this. Outwardly, he's a very kind guy. I still struggle with feelings as though I've betrayed a friend, but given everything, I'm not sure he ever truly saw me as a friend to begin with. I've documented all the logs I have, and the only things I've redacted are things that are very personal to myself and Emil. Family stuff, locations, etc. I've screenshotted all this information with Worcester, so if the logs and screenshots are sketchy to you, I can promise you they've been seen in real time by someone else whose identity is not unknown. It's real. I promise you it's sadly real. As a footnote for all those that plan to read these logs, please do so with your own discretion, as a lot of the language that I and Emil used is dated and extremely unacceptable to say. 2010 times were really something different and caused me physical pain to read over. Below is the screenshots I took from Gaia to show a timestamp as I just sent messages to myself with the logs. I would have taken screen caps of the whole thing, but for two reasons I did not. One, Gaia's webpage layout is absolute dog and for whatever reason cut off sections of the messages. Two, it would have made it harder to block my username and sensitive information. Now, after this lolly here goes on to show all of the screen caps of all of their conversations, she transcribes them in this Google Doc, which I will go over, and she adds a couple of footnotes here and there, which I'll also go over. Now, obviously, these are extremely sensitive allegations. These are not easy topics to read through. It's not easy topics to listen to. So since this language does get very graphic, viewer discretion is advised. We can see here the first screenshot is just all of her messages. They have dates and times. They're all labeled another convo with Chugga, Chugga, another convo with Chugga, just for what it looks like the better part of a few months. This is just evidence here that Gaia Online's webpage layout is massacring her ability to take screenshots as it just word wraps a lot. More screenshots of messages on Gaia we have here. Quite a few of them. Again, I will go over them. Uh, below is proof of having contact with Emil. We see one of her videos, Lolly's videos, and Chugga commenting on it. Makes Gigas... Gigas? Gigas? How do you pronounce that? Tell me in the comments. <laughs> I, I've never known. 
makes Gigas like 10 times creepier to have a small girl's voice, which is why I love it so much. And I admittedly yelled, whoa, at the end. So this is just 14 years ago, Chugga commenting on her video, proof of their contact. Here we have Discord messages between the two of them talking, of course, about feet and shoes, as always. And here in these logs, he does say that he wants to do what they used to do one more time. She asks to clarify, and he says, I mean to do the shoe thing that we did as teenagers, acknowledging the age gap that they had when they originally did this type of roleplay. And these were taken in 2021, she says, above is proof that I still talked to and main contact, maintain contact with Emil long after the logs. And here's one of the worst parts. She says... Below is proof of the old times roleplay that we mentioned. It was admittedly strange, but it was transactional, so I went through with it, even if it made me uncomfortable, but it didn't. But I didn't want to kink shame. To be clear here, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with a grown adult doing a consensual roleplay with another consenting adult. However, I'm trying to outline that this kink of his is the same thing he did with me while I was 15. There are many more logs of the roleplay stuff, but I don't think it's relevant to the point I'm making. So these screenshots are from 2022, and she is explicitly saying I did still talk to him as an adult we still role played and it was weird I didn't want to kink shame him but it was weird but me doing this with him as an adult does not excuse the fact that he did it with me when I was 15 years old which is true there is nothing wrong with two consenting adults doing this but when one adult goes to a child and tries to do it even if it's the same person it is extremely fucked up and not cool even if she pushed him to do it when she was 15, it is his fault for taking the bait because he was the adult in the relationship. Also, just because she continued to do it with him when she got older does not make it okay that they did it when she was 15. She continues to say, all of the stuff I've saved from these logs below is dated in 2010. It's the text format of the logs I saved on Gaia, far before anyone to my knowledge knew about his foot stuff. I hope that proves that it's truly him I was talking to and it's not fake. And the fact I kept in contact with him long after the fact and he references back to it as a fond memory for him. I understand the nature of all of this is hard to believe and I've tried my best to compile all of what I had. Thank you for hearing me out. And here we have all the transcribed logs back from 2010. Now, like I said, there are pages and pages and pages of this, about 40 pages of conversation. If you want to read through all of this, I'm just going to highlight the worst of it. Now, these messages start out pretty normal for a fan being contacted by a famous content creator. She says that she can't really believe he's talking to her. He says that he reads every message that he gets. They start talking about the game Mother and how they both love it so much. They start talking about Nintendo music and all different kinds of games. Even though it's a little cringy because it takes place in 2010, it's still a pretty normal conversation. Until we scroll down a little bit. Now again, this language is dated, and I don't know how much I can say because YouTube won't like it very much, but they get into some very explicit uh, conversations here, saying how he's going to take advantage of her, and then saying it's just a quote, and she says it wouldn't really be taking advantage of it because I would enjoy it. And again, he says it's a quote when he says that, but he is the first one to use this kind of language, and she rolls with it, even though she's 15. He then goes on to say, this isn't as bad as the 12 to 14 year old girls who write to me telling me of their massive crushes on me, which is hilarious because they don't even know what I look like. And she says, it's not totally impossible to be in love with someone not knowing what someone looks like. And then she says, just how old do you think I am? He responds with 18 question mark. She says, I'm flattered. Really? I'm only 15 turning 16 this year. He then says, oh, Jesus. He then goes on to say, whenever I meet people, if they see what I look like, they think I'm only 16. If they just hear my voice, they think I'm mid 20s, but I'm actually 19. But as you can see here, hearing her age does not deter this conversation. They keep talking about their voices, their computers. It goes on for a while talking about more of mother and music. But a couple times in this conversation, he does acknowledge that she's so much younger. If you go down here, she says, I generally don't judge by age or try to just because I'm physically young doesn't mean that I'm mentally young. And he says, you're not lesser, just younger, which I wish I was too. She asks why. And he says, the older you get, the faster time goes by and all that stuff. But he's acknowledging that she's young and he continues this conversation. Now, it wouldn't be Chugga Conroy if we didn't add in some foot fetish stuff or shoe fetish stuff. You can see here, he says, don't make me take your shoes away. And she says she'll tell her parents. And he says they won't listen to you because it'll be shorter without your shoes. They talk about heights and stuff. And we get little sprinkles of this throughout this entire conversation. Now, these conversations were taken back in 2010, so some of it is really cringy. She says here she's hungry and going to make a sandwich, and he says doing what you do best as a woman, which is pretty terrible. They talk about him being her sex slave, which is incredibly fucked up, considering, again, she's 15 years old. But here, all the way down on page 41, is where it gets extremely bad, extremely graphic, and I'm not even really comfortable reading this, but I'll do my best for you guys' sake. 
Now, in this conversation, Lolly says that you secretly love small children. Don't deny it. And he says you're only a few years younger, which, again, he's acknowledging her age. And she says it's still pedophilia. They do some more weird foot shoe stuff. And then he does a little role play thing here saying pushes you down and snatches your boots. She says that he's assaulting her, even though she doesn't use the word assault. They do more boot fetish stuff, some more sex role play. And they, they keep using that word that I don't want to say because YouTube and the conversation gets more and more graphic, saying that they both love it, that they both want it. They both start doing this kinky role play stuff. I really hate reading because, again, she's 15 years old. They start talking about the definition of the word lowly. And she's like, do you even know what that means? And he goes, I definitely do. And he says, lowly has a much better ring than pedo crush. They do more boot role play stuff. And then after some more inappropriate role play and boot fetish stuff, the conversation peters off and she says, yes, it really does just end here. Blame 15 year old me. Now, reading through this is terrifying. It's horrible. I mean, they both admit in these conversations that he is a pedo, that he likes forced sex, that all of this stuff is between a child and an adult, that it's illegal. They both mention it multiple times. And if all of this is real, if these chat logs are real, it is by far the worst allegation that has been put forth towards Trugger Conroy. Now, again, all 48 pages of this are available to read. I just wanted to highlight it for you guys. This has been shocking, to say the least. I woke up to a bunch of comments on my last video being like, it got worse, dude. It got worse. Go make another video. It got worse. And lo and behold, it got a lot worse. Now, Worcester here is the one breaking the story, saying that Lolly is their friend and that Lolly's identity does not want to be made public. So everyone respect the privacy, respect the people that are breaking the story. It's blowing up. As you can see, it has about four million views. We see Lady Emily has commented on it saying, I'm so sorry your friend went through this. This is horrifying. Sending her my regards and well wishes. It's so many people coming out with this and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And when you read through these pages, if you don't think that it's real, look at the language in these chat logs and then back at the language of all the other logs that have been leaked. You can clearly tell that it's Chugga Conroy doing the same foot stuff over and over. He obviously has a thing for foot size, foot smell, stealing shoes, putting shoes back on. It's clearly the same guy. But I just wanted to give you this quick update because it is such a bombshell that if this is real, it, it's that this is career destroying. I mean, this is it's terrible, terrible things that he said in those logs. Again, even though she did push for it in the logs, she is the one that kept having those conversations with him. He kept acknowledging it and pushing the conversation forward as an adult. If a child comes up to you and tries to talk to you like this and you are of age, just stop. Just block them. Just don't respond. Just say, hey, I can't do this. You're a kid. Like you are fully 100 percent responsible as the adult to not let the conversation go forward. And he allowed it to, which is really messed up. But guys, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs. So if you could subscribe, please, that would mean the world to me. If you want to watch me play games on Twitch, the link is in the description. And I'll see you guys next time with hopefully something a little more lighthearted. Bye.